The information provided on this podcast is for general informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your qualified health provider with any questions you may have. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this podcast. Reliance on any information provided here is solely at your own risk. Welcome. This is Birth Baby. Your hosts are Sierra Morgan and Samantha Kelly. Sierra is a birth doula, hypnobirthing educator, and pediatric sleep consultant. Samantha is a birth doula, childbirth educator, and lactation counselor. Join us as we guide you through your options for your pregnancy, birth, and postpartum journey. Thank you to our listeners for your continued support. If you enjoy our content, please be sure to like, follow, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. This helps us gain visibility to other people that could benefit from listening in. Hello, everyone. We are back with our special guest, Lisa Kestler. She is the owner of Hill Country Placentas here in Austin, Texas. If you have not listened to our episode with her about amniotic sac donation, you got to go do that because it is so stinking cool. So thank you so much for being back with us today, Lisa. We're going to talk to you a little bit today about placentas around the world and in different cultures, how they use them. So would you kind of just spring on us the first one that you want to share with us about? Because people do different stuff everywhere, yeah? They do. So the placenta is used around the world in different cultures for a variety of different reasons. Um, When I first got into encapsulation, I learned that about 75% of the world's women in, uh, consume their placenta in some form or fashion. Um, not in America, because in the United States, we're kind of far removed from like most natural things that have to do with our bodies. Um, but around the world, the placenta is very healing and they believe a lot of different things about the placenta and spirits and the baby. And it's just really interesting. So I started doing this little thing where I was researching different cultures and what they do with the placenta. And my daughter got married in India back in January. And I was like, I wonder what they do with the placenta. And so I started researching that. And I talked to my son-in-law and talked to his mother. He's an only child um, about what they remember about the placenta. But in India, the placenta is often buried near the house or burned in some communities. And a ceremony is held nine days after the birth of the baby. And that's when they announce the baby's name. Um, the, The placenta itself is considered to be a sibling of the placenta. It's wrapped in linen and then placed in a coconut after being washed. Then they recite a mantra Um, And then it's buried outside the family home and it's supposed to protect the child from evil. And then that spot is honored through the baby's important milestones. It is is considered to be the sibling or part of that baby, of that child. So lots of, in India, they have lots of different um, traditions around very special parts of um, growing up. And just like when they get married, the ceremonies last for three to five days. And it tells the story of that, the son's life and going off to find a wife. And it's, it's very interesting. And we had a great time uh, being a part of that. So I remember when you were at your daughter's wedding, because I just was enamored with all of the photos and you have all those kids and you trekked all the way over to India. Even your grandbaby was there with you guys. And I remember thinking, man, she is a saint for doing all of this. But when you started posting these on your business social media about the placentas and all of the different spots and what everyone does, I was like, this is so neat. And what a great homage to different cultures to just be able to talk about all of these and bring attention to it. So, all right, it was India. So what's up next? So my daughter and son-in-law honeymooned in Singapore and Bali. And so I looked up Bali one day and was reading about the traditions there surrounding the placenta. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. And I told my daughter, I said, you have to go to this and see this. And she was like, I'm on the wrong side of the island, mom. So it's on my bucket list now to travel to Bali to go for this specific reason. Um, But in Bali, the tradition is to enclose the placenta in a coconut shell and hang it from a tree in a village graveyard. And it is believed that this will protect the child from illness and misfortune throughout their life. 
So there's one oh. particular village and I cannot pronounce it. <laughs> you go to my social Bali. media to learn the name <laughs> of it. Um, but it's become a tourist attraction due to the hundreds of placentas hanging in its graveyard. So if you ever visit Bali, you need to go visit this graveyard. Um, and like I said, the link is on our Facebook page of this particular village. This graveyard has hundreds of these coconut shells that are holding placentas or probably like remnants of placentas at this point. I was going to say, I've seen some they, big placentas. Yes, how fast they uh, disintegrate. But each one of those signifies a birth and that they're trying to protect their new baby from illness and misfortune. And I just think that's such a really cool tradition and a cool thing to do and for the community to come together and do that for all of the children that are born there. That's so cool. The, yeah. the, the connection to the body and the, I guess the, the honor that mm-hmm. they are giving that, you know, that this organ that like grew life yes. and protected your baby and fed your baby for so long. And that's just really cool. I love that. Yeah. I, and they believe that it can continue to protect that child for its life. And I just think and that's it's so wild. Point. Here we are just throwing them away in the U.S. Yeah. often, yeah. you know, yeah, we're like, yeah, hey, thanks for doing your job. <laughs> Bye, Felicia, you know. Um, I, and that they're taking this time too. It's not like you just go put it somewhere. They are taking this time in the ceremony of all of that. Mm -hmm. I do wonder like what animal wildlife is coming into these, (laughs) these placenta graveyards. I'm like, I'm sure that attracts some wildlife. Also, I don't know, maybe the coconut shell, um, holds it pretty pretty tight or makes it so it doesn't leak out. I'm I'm not really sure. That's why I want to go visit it and and see it. I've seen pictures and literally there's just all these coconut shells hanging in this graveyard. <laughs> Sierra, I'm just imagining our husbands going on a trip with us, not knowing anything. And <laughs> so we're for sure going to Bali. We should all go to Bali this. together. <laughs> we'll all go to Bali. We will not tell Kyle and David. They're no. not going to listen to this episode anyway, because it's about exactly. Families. It's fine. <laughs> If if anybody listened to the father's <laughs> yeah, if anyone listened to the Father's Day episode, my husband does admit that he puts it on and puts it on like ultra fast and all the way down low volume oh so that it God. looks like he watched it or listened to it. It's support. <laughs> I still so feel like it's supportive. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> all right, what's That's up amazing. next on your list? Do you have another one to share with us today? Yes, Iceland. I think the Iceland one is is very cool too. Um, in Iceland, um, again, I. They have a specific term for placenta. I cannot pronounce it, but the placenta is considered very sacred and believed to be part of the baby's soul. And they've actually believed that the baby's soul is trapped inside it. So it's customary to bury the placenta under the mother's bedroom door threshold. And then some traditions believe that improper handling of the placenta can actually affect the fate of the mother and the child. So... So they like jackhammering the foundation? Like I'm trying, I'm picturing this. Yeah. Yeah, How do they do that? In the house? In the house under the threshold of the mother's bedroom door. It makes you wonder if their homes, when they're constructed, are like foreseeing that this is going to happen and kind of like make a space for it or something. Also, that's a lot of pressure. Like if I don't do this right, that is, I was thinking that when you were mentioning the India one, you were like, um, I think both of them, you said it's like to protect from illness and mm-hmm. kind of their future. And I'm like, what? I wonder if when, if their kid gets really ill or something, I wonder if they think, oh man, maybe we didn't do that placenta thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's because we didn't bury it in time. <laughs> yeah, that is, but it's I mean, so it's cool. Great. Yeah. Deeply rooted traditions. Deeply My husband rooted. doesn't even want one in our fridge to like hold until we get it to the encapsulator, well, let alone to be buried under a threshold. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard no. You have a big hole under the bedroom door. <laughs> that's so interesting. I know I, I heard on another podcast at one point they were talking about um, Transylvania and how they have the belief that if you don't like handle the placenta properly after birth uh, and dispose of it, and I forget exactly how it is, it's either like, uh, uh, like stabbing it or burning it. I can't remember. But if you don't do that, then it'll turn into a vampire and come back um, and get you. So that has always been really fascinating to yeah. me. It's That's also so a lot cool of pressure. It is a lot of pressure. <laughs> but how like the lore and uh, of just placentas in general and how, I don't know, just they, they influence childbirth, they influence like the stories that we tell in postpartum. It's It's so fascinating. 
I'm sure well, and I wonder, like too. going all the way back to the beginning of of humankind, and when they didn't really know even how their bodies worked, and they have this baby, and then this other thing, this thing comes out. out. You know, yeah, I wonder like, if they thought something was wrong. Yeah. yeah, and because they didn't know like how babies were developed, and yeah. <laughs> this thing, like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine what it was like then. Yeah, it's a really cool thing to think about. The India story, I think, makes a lot more sense. It's like attached. Mm -hmm. A sibling. Yeah. 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 You're right. Mm -hmm. Well, this is so cool. cool. Thank you so much for sharing these with us. We're going to have to have you come on. We're going to have to like a series of cool other cultural (laughs) things. Please know anytime I'm laughing. Please know anyone listening, anytime I'm laughing, it's just because I think it's so neat. I am not laughing, making fun of. I'm laughing in like joyful amazement at all of these other cultures that are doing this. Um, Sometimes I worry that people think my laughter is me making fun it's not no I think it's just I think the placenta is a joyful organ and it can it can bring heartache you know sometimes they don't work the way they should Mm -hmm. Um, I had my own experience with that with one of my kiddos but for the most part you know the majority of the time they do their job they do it really well um, and we have these brand new beautiful babies to thank for it yeah well thank you so much for coming on and we'll talk to you soon thank you so much Thank you for joining us on Birth, baby. Thanks again to Longing for Orpheus for our music. You can look him up on Spotify. Remember to leave a review, share, and follow wherever you get your podcasts. See you next week.